By the end of this tutorial, you will have finished making your own flexible crafting system in Unity. Last time we made the UI for the crafting system as well as some recipes using scriptable objects, so you can add as many as you want and they will automatically update in the crafting menu. We have also added some categories that the player can search through. And today we'll add the most important part, which is actually crafting the items, as well as some highlights, so that the player knows if he can craft the item or not. I will jump to the inventory manager, where we will first need to store some list of all of the items that we currently have in the inventory. So we have the list containing all of the items, and I will create a function that will actually return us this list, so that we can call it whenever we need. First, we want to clear the list of the items and then I'm going through each of the slots, which we have in the slots array, which are just game objects. I'm setting the slot script into a variable and if there is some health item in the script, I also assign the item script to a variable then I just have a index and boolean for was item added. So first we want to go through all of the items in our items list. And if some of the item scriptable object is the same as the scriptable object that we are going through now, it means that the item was already added, which means that we don't want to be creating a new instance of the item type and count. In this case, when the scriptable objects are the same, we can just add the count to the list and set was item added to true. If the item was not added yet, we can obviously just add new item with the properties from the item script. This is obviously just adding items from slots in the inventory, not from the hotbar. So we can just copy this hole for each loop. And instead of going through all of the slots, we will just go through the hotbar slots. And that's all, because return type of this function is list of the type item type and count, we obviously at the end want to return the list of the items. So now this function will return us a list which will contain all of the item scriptable objects and count of these items so that in the crafting manager we can check if we can actually craft the recipe, which is what we will do now. So jump to the crafting manager script where we will create function with return type of bool, which will just tell us if we can craft a certain recipe. And because in this function we'll need to access the list with all of the items from the inventory manager, I will make the inventory manager singleton. Singletons are pretty useful, so feel free to check my video about them. I just made a public static reference for the inventory manager, called it instance, and then in the void awake, I'm just assigning the instance or destroying it. Now we can get back to the crafting manager. I've also created a list with all of the items in the crafting manager. I'm setting it to the volume that we get from the inventory manager. So I'm accessing the instance and then I'm calling the function get all items. I'm defining a integer for found items so that later we can return if the found items is equal to the length of the input items. I have a for each loop, which is going through all of the item type and counts from the recipe scriptable object input. Then another for each loop, which is going through all of the items that we have in our inventory. And if the item scriptable object of the found item is equal to the scriptable object of the needed item, and the count of the found item is greater or equal to the count of the needed item, it means that we have the item that we need, so we can add found items. And break from this loop, because we have found the item that we are looking for. And at the end, if we have all of the items, then let's say that input items are free, the found items also should be free. So we can just return if found items are equal to the recipe script of object that input that length. So now we can know if we can craft some recipe. Next, we'll go to the item recipe script, but before we type anything here, I will go to the prefabs. I will select the recipe parent. 
on which we also have the item recipe script and add component event trigger. This will allow us to add some triggers such as when we hover over some UI element and so on. So for this we will need three. We will need pointer enter, pointer exit and also pointer click. Pointer enter will be used when the mouse enters this recipe then we will check if we can craft it. If yes, we will set the color to some greenish color and if we can't craft it, we will set it to some kind of red color. And if we click the recipe, we will obviously craft it if we can. Back to the item recipe script, I will create three voids which are corresponding to these three events. So we have the on pointer enter, exit and click. I will go back to unity and just hook up all of these events. So hit the plus icon and put the script here and select the function. In the item recipe script, I edit a boolean if we can craft this recipe and we will set this volume when we just hover the mouse over it so that we know if the color should be red or green depending if we can craft it or not. And to actually access it from the crafting manager, because we want to access this void that we have created, I will also make the crafting manager singleton. So now the crafting manager is also a singleton and back in the item recipe script, we can easily access the instance and from it we can access the void, which we called can't craft recipe and just set it to the variable of type boolean. And to the input of this function, we'll just put the recipe scriptable object, which is the scriptable object of this current recipe. So when the pointer enters the recipe, we want to set the boolean if we can craft it, then we want to fade in, so if we can craft it, we'll fade in to green. If we exit, we'll obviously fade out. And on pointer click, if we can craft it, here I'm checking it once more, even though I have set it to a variable, because the on pointer enter will trigger only once when you go over the item recipe, but then when we are clicking again, it is not going to trigger again. So that's why I am checking it here. If we can craft it, we'll craft it. And then I am again checking if we can craft it, because if we craft it and then we can't craft it, we want to set the color to red. So that's why I have another check in the if and we'll fade in to red. But before we get to the color fading, which is not the most important part for the system, we'll actually make crafting the items. So I will go to the inventory manager, where we will create new void, which will be taking two lists. One will be for the items that we want to craft and second one for the items that we want to destroy, which will essentially be the input items. So we have these two parameters for inputs and first we will be spawning the items so we obviously need to find the empty slot so we can pretty much copy the whole item picked void to find the empty slot and we can just delete the destroying of the item and this whole part of finding the empty slot will be in a for each loop so that we can spawn as many items as we have in the list of items to craft. So we are going through all of the items to craft, we are defining the empty slot, then we are going through all of these slots, and if the health item of this slot is equal to null, we are assigning this to the empty slot, and if empty slot is not equal to null, we are instantiating the item doing all of this stuff. The only things that will be different here is the scriptable object and the stack, which we will take from the current item to craft. And it is simple as that. It would probably be more effective to create new void, which would find the empty slot for us so that we don't have to be repeating the same parts of the code, but you can have it as your own coding exercise. Next, we'll make this drawing of the items that we used to craft the race type. So we'll again go through all of the slots and check if some of the items are equal to the items that we want to destroy. If this is true, we'll either destroy the item or we will just subtract the current stack.
And that's all that we need for the crafting system to work. We are going again through all of these slots. If the health item of the slot is not equal to null, then I'm assigning the slot script as well as the item script that the slot is holding. I'm going through all of the items that we want to destroy. And if that item scriptable object that we want to destroy is same as in the item script, then I'm checking if the item to destroy count is greater or equal. In this case, we can just destroy the item in the inventory. So set the health item to null as well. Else if the count that we want to destroy is less than the current of the item in the script, then we can just subtract the current stack. Now we can go to item recipe. So when we click on the recipe and we can craft it, we can call the void on the inventory manager. So we can access the instance of the inventory manager, call the void craft items. And because first we have the items that we want to craft, we need to create a new list of the type item type and count. And we can input the array of the output items. And then again, for the input, create new list and input the array of the input items. Let's see if it works. So open the crafting menu. You can go to the basic, try crafting some coins. You can see that it took 10 iron from us and crafted 100 coins. That works correctly. We can go to weapons, try crafting some bows. Yes, we can craft as many of them as we want. And we can also move them across our inventory. We can also try crafting the helmet. Yes, it seems that everything works. I can try crafting it once more when I don't have the iron and nothing is obviously happening. So yeah. Like this, you could add as many input and output items to your recipes and it will all be working. And because right now the player might not be sure if he can craft something or not, we'll make it so that he can get more visual feedback by fading the colors to green or to red, depending if he can craft it or not. I will go to the item recipe script and here, as I said, when the pointer enters, we can fade in and when it exits, we can fade out. So let's make these fade in and fade out coroutines. They have to be coroutines because by time we want to be increasing or decreasing the color. I created a float gradient time, which will take the correct value from the gradient. If you are not familiar with gradients, they are pretty useful. So the gradients allow us to linearly go from one color to another and you can easily set it in inspector. So into a serialized field, I will add variable of type gradient. I will call it fade in gradient. The values of the gradient can be from zero to one. And when I save it and go to the inspector, on the recipe where we have the item recipe script, we are able to see the fade in gradient and we can set the starting color, which is on the zero, and the end color. The start color can be white, and the end color, we can just select this anchor and set it to, for example, red. You can see this looks pretty nice. And we will create two gradients. One will be if we can craft the item, so it will be from white to green, and if we can't craft it, it will be from white to red. Just like this, we have two gradients. As I said, we need to make this a coroutine so that we can wait for some time. I'm setting the float gradient time, which again will be used to get the correct value from the gradient, where zero is the white, the beginning value, and one will be either the red or green. In this case, because we want to fade in, I am doing while gradient time is less than one, I'm going through all of the children of the transform, because while fading, we want to be changing basically colors of all of the children of the item recipe. So when we go to the recipe, you can see how the structure of the recipe looks. So under the coins, which is holding the script item recipe, which we have been just editing, we have the item, which is holding the image, the text, we have the equal and the plus icon if there is any. So back in the script, we are going through all of the children. I'm creating image array because from the child we want to get components in children of type image 
and I'm just converting it to list. I'm going through each of the image in the images list and I'm checking if the color is not black because for me the plus icon and equal icon are made just from black squares so I obviously don't want to be changing their color to white which would look quite weird so if the color is not black and we can grab the resipe I'm setting color of this image and if you want to get the color from the gradient you need to input some time which is the value from 0 to 1 so we can just type first the gradient that evaluate and to the parentheses the time else if we can't craft the recipe I'm just feeding in different gradient which is the can't craft and while being in the while loop I'm increasing the gradient's time just by delta time multiplied by some number and I'm doing yield return now so that it waits one frame and this is the coroutine for fading in the colors the coroutine for fade out will almost be the same we'll just need to change some volumes only differences here are that from start the gradient time is on one we are checking if it is more than zero and we are decreasing it by the data time not increasing now we can get back to these voids that you made before so on pointer enter we can just start the coroutine fade in we'll also start it if we can't craft recipe so that it will fade to red and on pointer exit we'll fade out so start coroutine fade out but before that i will also stop all coroutines so if the fade in coroutine is running it is going to stop back in unity when you have the recipe, don't forget to set all of these events triggers and also these gradients. Open inventory, go to the crafting menu and you can see that when I hover my mouse over some of the recipes, for now it is the coins and I can craft them, it is green, so I crafted them with no problem. You can try crafting some bows, some sword, but now as I don't have enough iron for this sword, it is red which I think is good visual feedback for the player if he can craft something or not. The same way with the bows, if I would craft many of them, yeah, now it is red and I can't craft anything. So now you have your own flexible crafting system, which you can use pretty much in any game. And it is only up to you which recipes you will add, which categories and overall how you will make it look. In my next tutorials, you can be looking forward to making maybe some equipment system, skill system, maybe some attack system and so on. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.